And the San Francisco 49ers get a huge victory against the New Orleans Saints, 48-46 to on a 30-yard game-winning field goal from Robbie Gold at the end of regulation. Now, this was a shootout, guys. 94 points scored in the game, but perhaps more elusive was the 49ers showed some amazing resiliency early in this game as they fell behind 20 to 7 and the Saints looked primed to take this game over but the 49ers strike right back now this wasn't the greatest game for the defense but the offense absolutely stepped up big time in this game and especially Jimmy Garoppolo he showed that he can handle the big moment and on the road Playing in the Superdome, Jimmy Garoppolo completed 26 passes on 35 attempts for 349 yards with four touchdowns in the game. He threw one interception, but that wasn't necessarily his fault. It was a throw to Sanders that went off of the tip. Uh, the tip of the hands of Sanders. He could have had it, but still, nevertheless, an amazing game for Garoppolo. And what's even more impressive is that the Saints were a number eight defense, so a top 10 defense. Jimmy Garoppolo was able to put up these type of numbers. And, you know, the Saints, you've got to give them credit. They have a very good offense in this game. But what we saw, guys, is that Kyle Shanahan's creativity was another big key in this game because he was able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Sean Payton, the head coach of the Saints, who is an excellent play caller. So, you know, to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Saints, I mean, they are a big offensive team. And Drew Brees still had a phenomenal game, completing 29 passes on 40 attempts. He also had 349 yards and five touchdowns in the game. So to overcome 46 points from the Saints and to be able to win this game, th what this says is that great teams find different ways to win football games. We've seen the 49ers defense be a number one reason a lot of times this year why they have won football games but the 49ers are now showing that they can win in many different ways of course we won a lot of games this year running the football very effectively which we also did very well today which I'll get into shortly but other ways now the question that has been posed this year is that can the 49ers win if the game is dependent upon Jimmy Garoppolo's throwing arm well, we have answered that bell, and especially today in a big moment, Jimmy G answered. And so for the offense to come up big time, especially with the defense allowing a late touchdown, and with 53 seconds to go, it looked like the 49ers were going to lose another heartbreaker. But, you know, the resiliency from this team and to be able to come through on fourth and two and to be able to give it to George Kittle, who is really the best tight end in the National Football League. And he absolutely proved it today with that amazing catch on fourth and two. And of course, even more impressive that Kittle does so well is the yards after catch. You know, he's able to take contact and continue marching down the field. And you saw the Saints, Williams, he did a face mask on Kittle and Kittle was still carrying him. So really, that was really the probably the greatest play in the game that set the 49ers up to be in field goal possession to be able to give Robbie Gold a nice easy attempt we shouldn't say easy but a nice easier attempt at 30 yard field goal to be able to win this game now receiving wise Emmanuel Sanders had the game of his life he came through with seven receptions for 157 yards so he has been a primetime target for Jimmy Garoppolo one of Jimmy G's go-to guys on the receiving end. And rookie receiver Debo Samuel, guys, another big phenomenal game for him. He came through with five receptions for 76 yards. And then George Kittle, guys, he got the 49ers going in the passing game. The 49ers, of course, last week, Kittle had two catches. So I think a point of emphasis going into this game was going to be to utilize George Kittle in the passing game and to be able to set up plays for him. And that is exactly what the 49ers did in this game. George Kittle with six receptions for 67 yards and a touchdown. Now Raheem Mostert also had a big touchdown. He had two receptions and 40 yards. 
Kendrick Bourne had two touchdowns in the game, and he is looking like he is winning the battle over Dante Pettis for that other wide receiver position on the 49ers. Now, Dante Pettis, I believe, did not play this game due to injury, but of course, uh, Kendrick Bourne is stepping up big time, and he is a guy that is looking like you can rely on him, especially on third down plays, and that is what he did today, guys, with three big receptions, 18 yards with those two touchdowns. And now, again, the 49ers used a very huge instrument of their success this season, which has been running the football. Now, last week, of course, with George Kittle's effective block abilities they were able to run the football very well against the Baltimore Ravens especially Raheem Mostert who had a career day last week rushing for hundred and forty six passing yards now in today's game he rushed for 10 carries with 69 yards and had one rushing touchdown which worked out today for an average of 6.9 yards per carry Matt Breida was healthy today which was phenomenal to see him back the 49ers he had six carries for 54 yards in this game and hi junior and he carried an average for nine yards per carry so yeah, it was absolutely amazing to be able to get the running game going again. That's going to be huge for the 49ers because, again, it helps create more plays, especially when you're going to be playing trick plays or utilizing the passing game. So those are all... Um, factors to take into consideration now let's get into the defensive stats of this game you guys so for the 49ers the leading tackler on defense was Richard Sherman he came through with seven tackles in this game Dre Greenlaw also came up big in the game with six tackles Jimmy Ward came up huge with five tackles Akilah Witherspoon who has been healthy now playing for the last couple games he came up big with four tackles and Emmanuel Mosley came up big with four tackles. Now, we saw on the Saints' last possession, which they had a touchdown on, Richard Sherman did come out of the game temporarily. And so the 49ers, who had been banged up a little bit injury-wise, on the defense um, on that last drive, the Saints and Drew Brees, they tried to target the secondary. So, you know, you had Emmanuel Mosley back there, and you also had Anikello Witherspoon, and then you had other different rotations rotating guys through so yeah you know this game there's not too much uh, to worry about with the 49ers defense that front four is still arguably the best front four in the national football league and you know we went up against a very high firepower offense uh, but the 49ers defense is definitely going to uh, be checking the film out and making the necessary adjustments uh, because nevertheless though we still did come up big and had huge stops in the game and, you know, outside of some silly penalties, uh, we were able to hold the Saints in some key positions and really keep this game in striking distance for the 49ers offense. And it, we happen to be able to possess the football at the very final minute of the game. And we, we were able to kick the game winning field goal. So what a game it was, guys. This was arguably the greatest game of the season this year. Um, so much fun, and I mean, this completes the 49ers' huge three-game gauntlet that everyone had been talking about with matchups against the Green Bay Packers and then the Baltimore Ravens, whom we played extremely well against, and of course, the Packers we destroyed, and then this game in the Superdome against the Saints. So the 49ers arguably have played three playoff games, and you can say they've arguably played four playoff games in their last five because... You have to throw in the Seattle Seahawks game as well. Among the five games that we've played and four of our last five coming down to the very last possession. So an absolute amazing uh, heart stomping four or five games that we have seen the 49ers play here. And it's only going to get more exciting as we have three more games to finish guys. And so with that being said, now let's look ahead to the future, to the San Francisco 49ers next game. Next Sunday, they're going to be taking on the Atlanta Falcons at Levi Stadium. So that will be a good one to welcome Matt Ryan into town. And the 49ers will look to keep that position for the number one playoff seed in the NFC. And we will look to improve to 12-2 and two on the season. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you made it all the way through, 
through to the end of the video, then be sure to smash up that like button and smash that subscriber button and smash the bell button. If you have not done so already, if you would like to be notified when brand new San Francisco 49ers post game recaps, we will be coming to you live after every 49ers game pre and regular season. And of course, also featuring in game live fan reactions for the games. So that will be the first video you'll see. And then the post game recap will follow shortly thereafter. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this one in New Orleans. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comment section. Let me know where were you to watch the game winning field goal and what was your reaction to it? Love to hear your guys amazing stories. This was a great one and love to hear your guys thoughts. And so I want to take this time now to thank all of you guys for watching my videos. I appreciate you guys so much and I would not be here without all of you. And so let me know down in that comment section what your thoughts are, guys. And as always, until next time, I will see you guys again. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.